In this video, I'll provide a very brief introduction to the Webpack Dev Server, focusing on version 1. If you'd like to follow along with the code examples, please clone this GitHub repo and you can run the example code locally on your machine. In a really basic Webpack setup, your webpack.config.js file might look something like this. For example, um, for my entry property, I'm specifying src slash index.js, and in the output section, I'm saying the path should be www and the file name should be bundle.js. So what this all means is that Webpack should take the contents of src slash index.js and bundle it all up into a file called bundle.js and put that file in the www folder and in that same folder is a file called index.html and that web page expects a javascript file called bundle.js to be available so if i were to go to my source code and paste in some arbitrary code like this I'll save that and now I'm going to need to run the webpack command so I need to go in my terminal and first make sure I'm in the right directory here and now let me uh, bring up the folder so I can see what happens now I'm going to type webpack and when I enter this when I run this command I should see a file called bundle.js here in this www folder and I do. I see bundle.js. So now when I open the browser, I can drag index.html to the browser and I see the alert message, which is great. So everything's working as expected. But there's two problems here. The first problem is that by dragging index.html onto the browser, I'm using what's called a file protocol and when you're doing local web development that's pretty much never what you want you want to use a local web server and there's definitely good reasons for that the second problem is that if i want to make a change to my source code if i were to make this change here i have to save this file go back to my terminal run the webpack command wait till it finishes when it finishes i go back to the browser and i reload the page and i see my changes it may seem like no big deal when we're just having a simple little alert, but this kind of um, these kinds of manual steps can really add up and uh, take a lot of time away from your development when you're working on some little bit more um, more serious code. And machines are good at things like this, so it'd be better if uh, we had a way to automate this, these kinds of steps. So Webpack Dev Server is a great way to solve both of these problems. If you go to the Webpack config.js file and knock out the entry section. I'm going to paste in a section called uh, dev server and there's two things to pay attention to here. The content based property tells webpack dev server where the web uh, server should run. So I'm saying it should the web server should run in this www folder and I chose that one because I've got a CSS folder in there, I've got my index at HTML in there and the bundle.js is in there. So that's where I want to run the web server from. And we have a port property which is arbitrary. I could have chosen chosen 5000 or 8888. I chose 3000, but that just tells the web server which port to run on. So now if I were to run the webpack dev server command in my terminal I see a message saying that it compiles successfully and if I go back to my browser instead of dragging index.html over and by using a file protocol I'm going to simply say localhost 3000 localhost colon 3000 and that shows us that we've got an actual web server running. It's the HTTP protocol, and we're just using localhost, which is a local machine, and using port 3000. Um, so that's great. So we solved our first problem, and then we have a local, a real actual local web server running. The next thing is that we can make changes here. So if I were to say, um, change this to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Watch what happens in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Look at this terminal here in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to save the file, and something's going to happen in the terminal. I saved it. We saw some activity in the terminal, and then the browser reloaded, and we see the new content. So what happened is the Webpack Dev Server pays attention to the source code, and when it sees that the source code has changed, it recompiles it. So it recompiles... Um, uh, bundle.js and then it reloads in the browser for us which is great so if I were to change this to let's say good 
by, again, I'm going to save the file. It recompiles bundle.js and loads in the browser for us. So that's an incredible time saver. I mean, now our manual steps of of recompiling and reloading the browser are taken care of for us and it's done automatically and we can work much faster. There's one other thing I want like to point out here. So uh, bundle.js, the JavaScript file, it's being loaded in the browser and we know that because we look at index.html and we see it's loading bundle.js and when we're making changes in our source code, um, like for example now we have the word goodbye and we reload the page and we see the word goodbye so everything's working great. But when we look at the actual bundle.js file here in the www folder, we see that our code says alert hello there. Well, that's the way our code looked about three or four minutes ago. But now our JavaScript says goodbye. So something's not right. It seems like the bundle.js that's being loaded is not the one that we stiff. It doesn't match the physical file that we see in the www folder. And that's because bundle.js is being loaded in memory. Webpack dev server uh, ignores the physical bundle.js file, doesn't even look for it, and it compiles bundle.js and it loads it in memory. And we can see that if we look at our JavaScript console. And if you look in the network tab, uh, if I reload the page, and then I look at bundle.js here, and if I do a search for the word goodbye, I could see it's in there. The correct version of our code is in there. Once again, I'll say, um, I'll change it to goodbye, one, two, three, four, five, save it, reload the page, and then I look at bundle.js, and I look, and I see goodbye, one, two, three, four, five. So everything in the browser is working exactly as we expect. There is a file called bundle.js. It's being loaded, and it's the, it's in, it includes the exact code that we expect. But the local version of this file is being completely ignored. In fact, if I go to uh, the actual physical folder and I take bundle.js and I drag it in the trash and I reload the page, we can see everything still works as expected. In fact, if I go back here and make another change, I'll say goodbye 54321, and then we see 54321. Uh, we can so what's odd is there's no physical file called bundle.js I'm looking at the www folder and there's no bundle.js but yet I can go here and there is a file called bundle.js and if I do a search for the word goodbye I can see goodbye 54321 so again what's happening is that is that webpack dev server will pay attention to changes in our source code and when it sees a change it will recompile bundle.js but it loads that in memory and it ignores any physical local physical copy of that file which is fantastic for web development but you never want to do that for production you don't want to use uh, webpack dev server for production if we were working on some real code here we'd probably have a setup so that every time we run webpack dev server it would still do a real build and put uh, bundle.js in the dist folder or something like that and that's kind of out of the, the context of this conversation but the main thing to keep in mind is that with webpack dev server there's uh, two really great things that happen you get to use a local web server very very simply and that when you make changes to your source code bundle.js is compiled automatically for you every time and reloaded in the browser and that uh, web server that you configure with Webpack is incredibly easy to set up. It is literally, f you know, five lines of code here, and you're up and running. So there's definitely a lot more to dig into with Webpack Dev Server, but hopefully uh, this has uh, got you up and running, and uh, you can see how it's an incredibly, uh, just very, very helpful and useful tool. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you.